I had planned to come and do a video last night. Um, I waited until the 11 o'clock news to try to gather as much information as I could. And I was seeing quite a bit on social media that I wasn't 100% sure about, and I'm still not. The last update that I had as of last night was that the father, Michael McKinney, had posted bond but had not yet left the jail because he was being fitted with a home monitor, an ankle monitor, and that he would be on house arrest along with Josh Mullins, who was also rumored to have posted bond. I will see what I can find out this morning and try to add a little bit more to the community page. As of yesterday evening at their arraignment, um, M.K. McKinney had a bond set of $5 million. He was charged with murder and I think seven counts of tampering with evidence. And Michael McKinney, his father, and Josh Mullins, who also lived in the home with them, were both charged with six or seven counts each of tampering with evidence. And little tidbits here and there are starting to come out, little bits of information. Hopefully in the days that come, I will be able to put together something more informative. But as of right now, this is all that I know. I'm going to share some clips from some different social media influencers, social media platforms, news organizations that just kind of give little bits more information about the arraignment. And as of right now, this is really all I can offer is just this update that they have been arrested and charged. And I think their next court date is October the 24th. Three people have been arrested in connection to a case where a Prestonsburg woman was killed in June of last year. 56-year-old Dr. Michael McKinney, a well-known dentist, as well as his son, 24-year-old Michael McKinney and 23-year-old Josh Mullins, were taken to the Floyd County Detention Center today. WYG's Buddy Forbes is live in Prestonsburg with the very latest. Buddy. That's right, Steve. Three arrests have been made in the connection to the death of Amber Spradlin. Spradlin was murdered June 18, 2023 in the Arkansas Creek Road community. Spradlin's family has been waiting for an arrest to be made for more than one year, saying this has been the hardest thing they have ever experienced. Today, Michael McKinney and Josh Mullins of Martin were arrested in Prestonsburg, and McKinney's son, Michael Kent, or M.K. McKinney, was arrested in Rowan County. All three men indicted for charges relating to Spradlin's murder. The family hosted a news conference with its legal team this afternoon, saying it is a day of cheer. And though it doesn't bring Amber back, it does provide a sense of justice. These people have been running around for 13 months like they didn't do a single thing, and uh, now they can't deny it. They're, they have to face up to it, and everybody in the community knows now, too. Now, M.K. McKinney is charged with murder and seven counts of conspiracy to tamper with evidence. The other two men are each charged with seven counts of that same conspiracy to tamper with, with evidence. The arraignment is expected to take place right here tomorrow in Floyd County, Buddy Forbes, WYMC Mountain News. We said last year when we had that press conference that we weren't going to let this be swept underneath the carpet somewhere. And it, it was swept under the carpet. I'm going to turn most of this over here to Debbie in a minute, but I just want to tell you all that there's 25,000 strong justice for I hope this isn't the end of it because if we're going to change things out here in eastern Kentucky, we need to get involved because we need to get rid of all this corruption that's going on out here. Anyway, for those of you all who don't know me, I'm Debbie Hall and I'm Amber's cousin. And she was murdered on uh, June 18, 2023 at Mike McKinney, Dr. Mike McKinney's house on Arkansas Creek. Uh, for the past 408 days, we waited for the arrest for those that are responsible for her death and those that are responsible for the attempted cover-up of the murder. Finally, as a community, we can uh, feel relieved knowing that those who are responsible will soon face the jury of their neighbors and the penalties that the jury will impose for their crimes. Yeah. 
far as criminally, and as a result of their involvement in the attempted cover-up, and those who will only feel uh, will only suffer from the civil suit, the civil penalties for what they've done. But each of them need to know that they will have to live with what they did to put into motion the event, which resulted in Amber's death. Um, I want everyone to know that while they've been criticized heavily, Commonwealth Attorney Brent Turner, the Kentucky State Police particularly Detective Justin Wireman and the others that were involved with the investigation. They have been amazing. Uh, they are, were responsible for the charges which were returned by the Floyd County Grand Jury today. Uh, and they have worked tirelessly, hours and hours, putting all of this together. And they've done a great job. Um, the reason for the time involved in this investigation was delayed to those who did everything possible to destroy the evidence. In the end, you will learn as the fact that the investigation unfolds that Amber was responsible. For the final clue, which reveals those responsible for the heinous murder. What is most revealing about Amber's death is that she brought together more than 25,000 people from Boy County across the globe. These friends of Amber will not be satisfied until the jury marches back into the courtroom with a verdict of guilty against those involved in Amber's death and the cover-up of her death, including the destruction of evidence at the Arkansas Creek home of Dr. Michael McKinney. I would be remiss if I did not take time to point out those responsible for setting the event in motion, events which led to the death of Amber on June 18, 2023. Most troubling is the arrogance of those who chose to move the 911 dispatch center from the Kentucky State Police Post at Pikeville to Prestonburg at a time when the 911 dispatch center was unprepared to protect the citizens of Floyd County. While each of you involved in removing the safety of the 911 dispatch center from the Kentucky State Police Post at Prestonburg, each of you should know that while you might not have been at Arkansas Creek on that fateful night, you have Amber's blood on your hands. The Floyd County Courthouse where Dr. Mike McKinney, his son MK, and someone who has been characterized as Dr. McKinney's adopted son, Josh Mullins, they've all been arraigned on charges related to the brutal murder of Amber Spradlin in Dr. Mike McKinney's home. 409 days ago. Not guilty pleas were entered on behalf of all three defendants, and their next court date was set for October 24th. The judge set a bond for all three defendants. MK, Dr. McKinney's son, who was actually charged with the murder, along with seven counts of complicity to tampering with physical evidence, MK's bond was set at $5 million full cash. Now, the additional condition of home incarceration, meaning if MK and his people are able to come up with $5 million liquid cash to get him out of jail, he's still going to have to be on home incarceration. The same goes for Dr. McKinney and Josh Mullins as well. Dr. McKinney's bond was set at $250,000 full cash. Josh Mullins' bond was set at $100,000 full cash. Once again, the judge did not say it on the record, but my sources tell me that both Dr. Mike McKinney and Josh Mullins will have the added bond condition of home incarceration in the event they are able to post those substantial cash bonds. It is my understanding that Dr. McKinney's bond has already been posted. If the judge's order does in fact require home incarceration on top of that $250,000 cash bond, then Dr. McKinney is just sitting over at the jail right now waiting to be hooked up on an ankle monitor so he can be released on home incarceration. All three are charged for allegedly removing, concealing, or destroying the handle from the knife used. The third is accused of stabbing Amber repeatedly, resulting in her death. His father, Michael Kim, second, 
and Josh Mullins are said to have helped him clean up the crime scene and destroy evidence. They're all charged with tampering with evidence and concealing or destroying the handle of the knife used, clothing McKinney the third wore, a surveillance camera, and a digital video recorder. That's all according to the indictment. Our 13 News reporter Lane Ball has been on the case since the very beginning. He was in court with the suspects today. He joins us tonight from Prestonsburg. Lane, what happened in the courtroom today? Well, Amanda, Michael McKinney the third, Michael McKinney the second, and Josh Mullins all appeared to be fairly calm as they came into Floyd County Circuit Court earlier today. Now, there was Michael McKinney the third. He appeared first, and the judge set his bond at five million dollars cash. His father, McKinney the second, appeared after him, and his bond was set at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Mullins' bond was the lowest at one hundred thousand dollars. As the bond is posted, all three men will have to be on home confinement, and they must hand over their passports. To Sure, they don't leave the area before their next court appearance. Now, McKay the second, McKay the third, and Mullins were arrested Tuesday afternoon following grand jury indictments in the murder case. McKay the third is facing murder charges after investigators say he killed Spradlin with a knife inside a home along Arkansas Creek Road in Martin. He, his father, McKinney the second, and Mullins are also facing charges of tampering with evidence at the crime scene. Now, a crowd watches the arraignments unfold today, including Spradlin family members who have been waiting for this day for a long time. It's finally 13 months, 13 and a half months, and they finally have to uh, take a little bit of accountability for what they've done. We won a battle, but we still got a war. <laughs> One thing about all this that has kind of caught my attention, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, was that when Amber Spradlin was murdered and her body was taken to Frankfurt for an autopsy, they said that the knife blade was broken off inside of her head. And she had been stabbed 11 times, including one straight downward, uh, like someone was over top of her, that went entirely through her throat and through her voice box. I believe, uh, upon hearing some of the things that have been said in the news the last day or two, that they tried in vain to pull the knife back out, and it was just stuck and wouldn't come out, and that they dismantled the handle off. But I believe that they took the the handle off of the blade while, to get rid of the handle with their blood and their DNA and their fingerprints and everything else on it. I don't know if the police recovered any of these items, the knife handle. They did say, you know, they said that it was taken apart. So maybe they did find it. Maybe they didn't. Details will come out when the court, you know, proceedings begin. A little bit of, um, after watching their lawyer, or at least one, one lawyer for at least one of them, speak on this last night in an interview, he didn't come right out and pull the finger at any particular person, but people believed by the tone that they were that he was saying, "Let's wait for evidence to come in." There's more to this. Of course, that's what a lawyer is going to say to defend their client. But people are wondering if they're going to try to pull the finger at Roy Kidd, who was the friend of Amber's, who was there at the house that night as well. And. Um, Everyone's just hoping that the DNA, the evidence, the blood, the, you know, the cameras were all removed. I don't know if they were able to recover anything from any kind of cloud source, you know, text messages or anything that might have led to any kind of um, evidence. But if Roy Kidd's DNA and blood and that type of thing was not found on Amber or on her clothing or on anything inside the home, then I don't know if they would be able to try to, you know, make him the scapegoat. Um, but time will tell, and as this goes on, and as the court begins, and like I said, they don't go back into court until October. This could drag out for years, sadly. Once again, I apologize for the late update. I had hoped to bring another update last night, but as of about 11 o'clock last night at the evening news, 
the only report that I could find was that Mike McKinney, the dentist, the dad of MK, had posted bond and was waiting to be fitted with an ankle monitor before he was released. It was also rumored on social media that Josh Mullins had also posted bond. There were some rumors saying that both of them were out and at home, and others were saying no, that it was too late at night for them to be uh, set up with the ankle monitoring system, so they probably had to wait until this morning for that. If I find new reports throughout the day, I will come back and do another update. But as of right now, um, time will tell if MK McKinney is able to come up with the $5 million cash to post his bond. He will be uh, required to turn over his passport, and he will also be required to be on home incarceration. Um, I don't know if that would mean that all three of them would be living there together on Arkansas Creek and Boyd County. I will find more details and do another update as soon as it comes in. Thanks for watching.